The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. It's the middle of the afternoon, not even three o'clock yet, but Gildersleeve has locked up the water department for the day. He has to get to the bank before it closes, and he's told himself it would hardly be worth returning after that. In one hand, he carries a small canvas bag, well stuffed and gathered at the top with a drawstring. On his way down State Street, he chances to pass Peavy's pharmacy. He stops, hefts the canvas bag, and steps into the shop. Peavy, my friend? Well, hello, Miss Pinky. Are you me? <laughs> Peavy? I'll bet you can't guess what's in that bag. What's in the bag? Yeah. Go on and guess. Oh, excuse me, I'll just see what this gentleman wants first. Oh. Uh, was there something you were looking for, sir? No, just, just looking around. I'm waiting for a bus. Oh. Well, I'm always glad to have people look around. <laughs> now, Mr. Gillespie, what can I do? Go ahead. Guess what's in the bag, Peavy. What's in the bag? Yes. It sounds like money. Correct. And how much money? Guess. Well, I wouldn't want to say. Go ahead. Make a guess. Fifty dollars? Ha! My friend, right there in that little bag, there's no less than $2,200 in cash. Good gracious, you bet. Yes, sir. $2,200. Hmm. More money than you've ever seen, either. Would you like to see a $20 bill? Uh, Mr. Gillespie, I wouldn't talk so loud if I were you. Why not? Well, that man over there at the magazine, right? Do you know him? Never seen him before in my life. Neither have I. What of it? Well, I never feel easy with large sums of money around. Now, for instance, if he should happen to be it. Well, there he goes. You must have seen his bus coming. Or heard us talking about him. What do you mean? Well, I'm not a suspicious man, Mr. Gildersleeve, but there are very few people in this town that I don't know by sight. And the way he bolted out of here... Could have been his bus coming. Hmm, could have been. Hmm. Why did I have to go and shoot off my big mouth? Oh, you're being ridiculous, P.B. Mm, cautious, maybe. As a matter of fact, I make it a point to never have more than $5 on the premises here at any time. I don't see what you're worried about here. You've got a safe. Oh, I never keep money in the safe. <laughs> Why not? The first place a burglar would look. <laughs> well, I never thought of that. Well, where do you keep it? <laughs> The Peavy, you trust me, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I trust you. Here, I come in here with all this money. Let me ask you something. How do you happen to be carrying all this money? Well, it's Bessie's fault. That's my secretary. Or she was. Ever since she quit, things have been turning up. I looked in a desk drawer today, and there was two weeks' cash receipts. Never been deposited. A fine thing. If I could get Bessie back, I'd fire her. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, my advice to you would be to get that money right down to the bank. That's what I'm on my way to do. Just stopped in here to, well, I'll let you have a look at it. Oh, thank you. That's very considerate. But if I were you, I wouldn't stop to show it to anyone else. It's two minutes to three right now, and the bank closes. Two minutes up? Are you oh, sure, Peavy? Oh, my goodness. My watch must be... Uh, goodbye, Peavy. Oh, sorry, madam. <laughs> I'll never make it. I'll never make it. Oh, sorry, pal. One side, please. Oh, brother, is it still open? Locked. Let me in. Let me in. Hey! Darn banks, they're always closed when you want them. Hey! Banks, they take your money and then they won't let you in. Open up. Open up here. Hey! Hey! The guard sees me. Here he comes. Taking his sweet time about it, though. Come on, fatso. Well, open up. Don't stand there making faces at me. What's he shaking his head about? Let me in. I want to deposit some money. I don't want to look at your watch. I want to deposit some money. Hey, come back here. Fake cop grins and goes away. It's the way it always is. Come down here and they slam the door right in your face. Sorry. 
call themselves a bank. They have a holiday every five minutes. Columbus Day, Hoover's birthday. No, what do I do? I've got all this money here. I have to take it home with me, I guess. By George, if anything happens to it, I'll sue him. I'll sue the pants off of him. Anybody home? No, just as well. We'll get rid of this right away, I guess. Hide it someplace. Where? I know. If I tuck it down on the bottom here. Mr. Gilfrey, I didn't know you... What? Bertie, don't ever do that. Don't do what? Don't ever sneak up on me like that. I wasn't sneaking up on nobody. I didn't even know you was home. I just came in here... All right, all right. You startled me. That's all, Bertie. Sorry. Yes, sir. Something wrong with the car? No, no, nothing wrong. I just, uh... Taking a look, that's all. You lose something? No, no, I thought I heard a slight noise in there. Thought maybe a squirrel had built a nest or something. <laughs> but it turns out that was not the case. <laughs> no, the clock's all right. Well, it ain't going. You better let me... Bertie! Yes, yeah. If the clock needs fixing, Bertie, I'll fix it. Well, it's up to you. The pendulum stop, that's all. I know. That pendulum hit me in the ear. That's a very delicate clock, Bertie. It was made by an ancestor. Tell them what? Oh, all right. Quiet, Bertie. Here comes the children. Don't say anything about you know. About what? About anything. Come away from the clock. I ain't gonna touch it. Well, come away from it. Well, children. Hello, Anki. Hi. What's this you're not gonna tell your uncle? Leroy? Huh? Nothing, Unc. Hmm. Marjorie? I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. Uh, Bertie? Yes, sir? If you're going upstairs, bring down my revolver, will you? Are you kidding? <laughs> well, it isn't loaded, Bertie, but never mind. I'll get it myself. You couldn't find the bullets anyway. Revolver? What in there? What do you want your revolver for, Uncle? Huh? What for? Nothing. Uncle Mort, you can't say you just want a revolver for nothing. It's just a precaution, that's all. Now, I don't want to alarm you children, but when you have large sums of money on hand, it's always safest to, well, you know the Army's motto, be prepared. How much money have you got, Uncle Moore? Yeah, how much? Where did you get it? Did you win it? There are other ways of getting money than winning it, Leroy. Yeah? What? <laughs> Besides, this isn't my money. That's why it's such a responsibility. How much is it, Anki? A considerable sum. Oh, come on, Uncle. Tell us how much. I'm not saying, but it's a considerable sum. Over $2,000. <whistles> 2200 to be exact. Really? And Craig is always blowing about how much dough his old man has. Oh, boy, just... Leroy, you come right back here. I want you to say a word about this to anybody. You understand? Either of you. I don't want you to even mention the word money. Why not? Because somebody might try to break in here and steal it, you idiot. Really, Leroy? Oh, I didn't know. Gosh. Where is the money, Unc? Never mind. I've hidden it. Where? In a safe place where nobody will find it. Where? Never mind. I'm not telling is it in the clock? Oh, <laughs> How did you know? Well, Unky, that's where you always hide everything. That's the first place we look on Easter. Oh, my. I'll have to hide it somewhere else. Well, might as well get it out as long as every Tom, Dick, and Harry knows about it. Can I look at it? Can I hold it? Get off of me, Leroy. Get out of the way. Is that it? That little bag? That's it, my dear. I oh, kidding. Us. I am not. Open it up. Let us just peek, please. Well, here. We'll put it on the table. Gee, I never saw so much. <laughs> that, my boy, is a $20 bill. Probably the only one you'll ever see. <laughs> That's legal tender. Who's the old geezer on it? Don't they teach you any history at that school? That's Washington. Under the picture, it says Jackson. Well, some have Washington and some have Jackson. <laughs> uh... Who's that? The phone. I'll answer it. Hello? Judge? Yes, Uncle Mort's right here. Oh, and Judge, guess what he brought home with him? Marjorie! Huh? 
give me that telephone. I'll speak to you later, young lady. But I didn't know... Hello, you... Judge. What's on your mind? Poker tonight? Love to, sure. What time are the boys... No. Wait. I can't, Judge. I can't, that's all. I don't dare go out of the house. Never mind why I can't. See, why don't you get the Jolly Boys to come over here? Just as well play here as there. Sure. We'll do that. And Horace... Um, Horace, when you come and ring the doorbell, give it two short rings and two long. That'll be the signal. Never mind. Just do as I say if you want to get in. No, young lady. What did I tell you? Tell me about what? About mentioning that money to people. Well, I didn't think that you You meant... children don't seem to realize the seriousness of this situation. I want you to say nothing about it, you understand? Nothing. But it was only Judge Hooker. Surely you don't think... I mean, the judge would never in the world... That's what they said about Benedict Arnold. (laughs) Food buyers, here's a frank message for you from the Kraft Foods Company. A few weeks ago, we told you that your old favorite Kraft American is back. Well, we're making Kraft American in tremendous quantities, and we're trying to keep food stores supplied with it. But from all over the country, grocers report that so many people want this famous cheese that their stocks are sold out almost immediately. Of course, there are many reasons for this rush for Kraft American. For the last few years, it has been practically off the market. And then, when we suddenly announced that we had Kraft American, millions of homemakers rushed to get a supply of their family's old favorite. They remembered its grand, medium-mellow cheddar flavor, its wonderful cooking qualities. They remembered those good cheese dishes made with Kraft American and those swell snacks and sandwiches. Is it any wonder, then, that your grocer might have been out of Kraft American when you wanted it? He'll have another supply in a day or two. So keep on the watch for genuine Kraft American every time you're in the food store. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. His friends have arrived and given the prearranged signal to his satisfaction. He has unchained, unbolted, and unlocked his front door and is welcoming his guests. Uh, come in quick, fellas. What's going on here, anyway? Wait. <laughs> what is all this, Commissioner? Expecting relatives? No. Good evening, Mr. Gildy. Hey, you got a pistol? For heaven's sake, Gildy. What's got into you? Nothing. I'm just being careful, that's all. Where's the chief? Had to go out of town. <laughs> Cops convention. Boy, George. You can leave your coats in the hall here. Thanks. Uh, let's go in the parlor, shall we? I wish you'd put that cannon down, Commissioner. I ain't saying you don't know how to handle it, only I'm nervous, that's all. I can handle it. Don't worry, Floyd. That's one thing I learned in World War I if I didn't learn anything else. Well, it seems to me you owe us an explanation, Gildy. Mysterious signals, doors bolted, waving a pistol. I prefer not to give an explanation, Judge. I think you can take my assurance that I have reasons. I may say also that I'm darn glad to see you, fellas. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, has all this got anything to do with... Peavy, whatever you're thinking, don't say it. I wasn't going to say anything. Well, don't. Have a chair, Judge. Make yourself comfortable, Floyd. I'll try the sofa. Well, what are we going to play? Poker or cops and robbers? I'm for poker. Only, Gildy, I think it might look more like a sociable game if you put that gun in your desk or someplace. Get it out of sight. All right. You talk like somebody's grandmother. Well, let's get going. How do you feel, Peeve? Lucky? Well, poker is a game of skill, Floyd. Ha! Let's get the chips around. I can't stay out all night. Everything is on the table, fellas. I was going to... Did you hear something? Hear what? I heard somebody out in the porch. Yeah, just the wind, Mr. Gallifrey. There's quite a breeze out this evening. It's March, you know. Oh, yes. No ashtrays around, Commissioner. Fireplace okay for butts? Oh, sure, Floyd. Okay. Floyd, for heaven's sake, do you want to start a fire in there? Oh, I should think you'd have more sense. What did I do? You just told me it was okay. Well, if you must know, it just so happens I don't want $2,200 to go up and smoke, that's all. $2,200? Funny place to keep it. He's kidding. If he had 2200 bucks, he'd be in Mexico. You can count it if you want to. No, you don't. It's not my money. 
These are water department funds. All the more reason to go to Mexico. Huh? What'd you do, sell a reservoir? It's two weeks collected. I got to the bank too late to make the deposit, and I have reason to believe certain people know about it. There's been a lot of crime lately around here, fellas. Oh, poppycock. Hey, I got a great idea. Let's use the money instead of chips. Make it look like a big game, huh? No. There'll be no tampering with department funds. I'll put the bag here on the mantel where I can keep an eye on it. I'll hide it again later. All right, let's play poker. Divide up some of these chips, will you, Petey? I'm counting the cards. Uh, let me have that chair, will you, Floyd? I'd like to keep an eye on the money. I should think you'd rather keep an eye on the door. Uh, maybe you're right. Stay there. Okay. Now what? Uh, deal me in, fellas. Hello? Hello? They hung up. That's funny. What's funny about it? Wrong number, that's all. Some guy calling up a girl and he gets you. I'd hang up, too. I don't like that phone call, fellas. If somebody knows the money's here, they'd naturally try to find out if I was home. 49, 50, 51, 52. Huh? Get they're all here. All right, for heaven's sake, let's play poker. I'll never bet on a pair of eights again. Well, it was a nice game. Nobody got hurt, and we all get home early. I don't see why everybody is in such a hurry. Horace, why not stick around and play a little cribbage? It's early. I've got to be in court in the morning, Gildy. Dispossess case. Oh. Floyd? Eh? Uh, Peavy? If I stay out any later tonight, I'll never get out tomorrow night. I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but you know my rule. Always in bed by 12. Yes, I know your rule, but it's only 11. Well, I have various things to attend to before I retire. Well. <laughs> Fine bunch of friends, I must say. Hey. I think there's some cold tongue in the icebox, fellas. Stick around. We'll eat. What's the matter, Commissioner? Nervous? Certainly not. I wouldn't worry, Gildy. These crime waves in the papers are generally exaggerated. This my coat? Yeah, it is. Wait a minute. Judge, you mean these robberies and holdups, there weren't any? Well, no. There has been a certain amount of lawlessness, but the police have rounded up most of the bad element. They didn't get those guys that stuck up old man Hogan. Tied him up in the cellar and stole his drapes and silver. Never caught him, you say? Nope. They come around here, just give them the money, Commissioner. Don't try to be a hero. <laughs> come on, fellas, let's get going. Well, good night, Mr. Gildersleeve, and thank you for a pleasant evening. Yeah, good night, Peavy. Wait a minute, Floyd. Uh -huh. I'll unlock the door. Well, come on, I can hear Lovey's foot tapping the floor already. He's gone to get his gun. <laughs> you must think he's Edward G. Robinson. He's crazy. Fellas, would you do me a favor? Leave quietly. There's no use advertising the fact that I'm all alone here. Anything you say, Gildy. We'll be little mice. Well, good night, boys. Good night. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Oh, for the... <laughs> Listen to him locking himself up. Gildy likes to dramatize these little situations. Say, how'd it be if we throw a rock at the window or something, huh? Worry him a little. Oh, that's a cruel idea, Floyd. I wouldn't hurt him. Just scratch on one of the shutters, maybe. What do you say, Steve? Just for laughs, huh? Well, I wouldn't care to take part in it, Floyd. On the other hand... <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you both chicken. But wait here a minute, I'll do it. I'll get a stick and scratch on the follow window. As a rule, Peavy, I despise practical jokes. The funnier they are, the worse they are. Floyd's poking into the window now. Oh, rascal. <laughs> Holy smokes, the guy's got no sense of humor at all. I want the police department operator. I don't know the number. It says in the book you don't have to know the number in an emergency. Well, this is an emergency. Darn, she 
chief of police. Every time there's a crime wave, he's out of town. Uh, let's see. Where's the best place to be in case of a... If I drag the chair over here, I can command the door and all the windows. At the same time, my rear is protected. It's very important. <laughs> There. Maybe hours before that cop gets here. Well, just have to stay on the alert till he arrives, that's all. <laughs> Only four bullets left. <laughs> Department's a disgrace. Uh, I'll tell him so. I'll tell the chief personally. If he doesn't pay any attention, I'll tell the chief. Yeah. Tell the chief. What's that? stuff to the bank as soon as it opens. If I... Foot's asleep, Bertie. Have you got a brown paper bag? I guess so, Miss Gilsey. What for? I had an idea in the middle of the night. I'll put the money bag inside the brown paper bag so nobody will notice it. I'll see if I got one. <laughs> Mouth tastes terrible. <laughs> Can I have my own one song? For heaven's sake, Leroy, stop thinking about money. Money, money, money. That's all I hear around this house. I didn't sleep a wink all night trying to protect you children. Now you want money. Oh, gosh. Here's one I'll hold it, Miss Gilsey. Yeah, that ought to do it, Bertie. There. Eh, what time did you say it was? About 9.30. Oh, my watch has stopped. Guess I forgot to wind it. Well, I'll just catch the bus on the corner and... Where's my hat? Here. Are you coming back, Uncle? I'll be back for breakfast. What the... Oh. <laughs> I'll see. Don't bother me about it. Gosh, 2200 bucks and he can't spare 50 cents. <laughs> You'd think I'd know somebody on this bus. Not a soul. <laughs> nice morning, isn't it? What? I said, uh... Nice morning. Oh. <laughs> this is my lunch in the bag. That's so? Yeah. I don't usually take my lunch to the office, but today I thought I would. <laughs> Such a nice day. <laughs> I've got an orange in here and a roast beef sandwich. And some potato chips. <laughs> and a piece of chocolate cake. Don't you believe me? I believe you. <laughs> Guess you want to read your paper, huh? 
if it's all right with you. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Friendly. Try to be pleasant in what happens. He's not reading his paper. He's watching me out of the corner of his eye. <laughs> Ugly fella across the aisle there, too. He's pretending not to look at me, either. I wonder if they're in league. Probably Confederates. Scratching his nose must be a signal. Well, uh, it won't trap me. I'll wait till everybody's off, and then I'll make a break for it. <laughs> Wish I'd brought my gun. I've got a permit. Ought to get one. I will. See the sheriff the first thing Monday. A lot of crime going on, no matter what Hooker says. The courts are always the last to get wind of these things. A lot of crime. In broad daylight, too. Post-war psychology. Hey, Keep cool, Gildersleeve. Don't move yet. They're not moving. Wait. Wait. Now. Out! It, gangway! Hey! It, let me out, folks! Hey. Oh, it, pardon me! It, let me out! Ha. Uh, guess I was too smart for him. <laughs> yes, sir, you have to get up pretty early in the morning to catch your old Hey! See? <laughs> He's getting off, too. Hey! I made it. Oh, for goodness. Let me in. Let me in there. Hey, you. Don't grin at me. Open up. There's a man after me. Hey. <laughs> don't shoot. Here. You forgot your lunch. My lunch? <laughs> The other day, a food shopper told me that it's certainly good to find more Velveeta in the food stores again. This smooth-melting cheese food with the rich yet mild cheddar flavor is so good for cheese sauce and sandwiches. And now, during Lent, Velveeta is a double help with meals and snacks. And here's another piece of good news for you cheese lovers. Kraft American is back. Kraft American, with the medium-mellow cheddar flavor your family has been hankering for. Kraft American that cooks perfectly that makes such wonderful snacks and sandwiches. Yes, America's favorite pasteurized processed cheese is back. If by chance your grocer doesn't have Kraft American tomorrow, it's because other cheese lovers got there ahead of you. But we're making a lot of Kraft American now, and your dealer will have more in a few days. So look for it. Keep on the watch for dependable Kraft American. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. Stay tuned in for Duffy's Tavern, which follows over most of these stations. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, I'm going out now to eat my lunch. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> When you want to give an extra flavor lift to your family's favorite dishes, that's the time to call on Kraft Prepared Mustards. They're such grand help in pepping up foods, we'd suggest that you get both popular kinds for a variety of menu uses. Tangy Golden Kraft Salad Mustard for blending into cooked egg and cheese dishes, salad dressing, and barbecue sauces. And Kraft Mustard with snappy horseradish added for spreading on sandwich meats and for use in tasty sauces for fish. Buy both of these delicious Kraft Mustards when you shop tomorrow. This is NBC, the...